Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Almost Normal. I am going away for Thanksgiving in like four hours. Um, so I've literally spent all day cleaning the house and cleaning all my clothes to bring on the trip because right now I have nothing to wear. I didn't do my makeup fully. My hair is greasy, like it's a different kind of day today than usual. Um, I'm sorry for my appearance. Um, I kind of rolled out of bed. I also, for the past two nights, and I'm not on my period, but for, for the past two nights, I've literally woken up with the most painful cramping, like in my period cramping area. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I, it's been so bad. It's like woken me up each night at like 4 a.m. Um, and I, I, I don't know what's going on. So anyway, I'm like sleepless. <laughs> and chaotic today so I hope that's okay um but anyway hi guys welcome back to almost normal how's everyone doing um I'm also slightly riddled with some travel anxiety um which I get every time I leave my house um I don't know quite why I get that is there something specific I think is gonna happen when I leave I don't know do I not like flying I actually kind of like flying Feels like I can just like completely plug off from the world and not be connected at all. So I don't know what the fear or anxiety comes from. <sighs> Maybe I fear I don't bring like certain medications and then I'm going to be stuck somewhere with no medication and like I cannot really function without medication. <laughs> My brain um, was not made for this planet. Uh, so it does, it definitely needs chemical slash medical help to survive. Um, so maybe I like, I'm so overwhelmed by the fact that I need to bring my medication and also like if I lose my medication for some reason, I'm not gonna be somewhere where I can like refill it. So maybe that terrifies me a bit. So that must be part of, part of it. I also just have like anxiety, OCD. So I always kind of think my house is gonna burn down. I always kind of think um, my house is gonna flood. I always kind of think someone's gonna break into my house. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I have all these like thoughts going around my mind and I'm only going for like four days. So I don't know, well, maybe a week actually. Maybe I'm going for a week. <gasps> yeah, I am going for a week. All right, well, let's not worry about that right now. Yeah, I don't know. These like period pains are like making me anxious as well. They're like adding to it. I woke up and I was just like in such a bad mood, but I'm like not on my period. So I don't really understand what's going on. Today, I wanted to kind of talk about people pleasing because this is such a big problem of mine people pleasing is my absolute vice apart from vaping <laughs> and shopping too much like people pleasing is 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 so bad for me so bad i don't think i go a day without doing something that's basically purely to impress someone else <clears throat> or make someone else feel happy and comfortable I don't think there's a problem with making people happy and comfortable. I think that's a really nice thing to do. I think the problem stems from when you're putting your own happiness after those and you're sort of dictating your life based on other people's experience. And I, I do this all the time. I do this all the time. I think within people pleasing as well, it also affects your personal goals. It kind of changes what you think you want in life and you actually don't, but you're kind of just doing it to fit in, I guess would be the best way of sort of describing it. Um, another thing I also do a lot, um, I find people along the way all the time, whether they're on the internet or in real life, who I sort of uh, idolize and then I just like wanna be that person. And I go to the extremes where I like buy all new clothes or I want to change my appearance or I kind of sometimes like change the way I talk or my mannerisms and I lie about the things that I'm interested in to just impress other people. I am so unhappy when I'm like that because I'm just not being myself and it's like really tough work to live your life like basically as someone else. I would say it's one of the hardest things to do. Being like genuine and honest and real is also hard because I think as humans, we're so judgmental and we like never think we're enough and we never think we're good enough. So to be like 100% genuine and honest all the time is also quite difficult and a bit scary and a bit like vulnerable. Um, and I totally get that. So 
I kind of feel like as humans, we naturally see people we enjoy. We see people who we find like quote unquote cool or whatever. And when we're feeling sort of insecure about ourselves and who we are, we kind of latch onto those people and we kind of like not turn into them, but we kind of just sort of mimic them slightly in the hopes that we will get something that they have, which we obviously like look up to. The past few episodes, I've really been talking about like comparing ourselves to other people and just the idea of like not feeling enough. Like last week I spoke about how I find it so hard to celebrate myself and how like everything I achieve, I like don't think I deserved it or there was like some sort of mistake in the system that just like allowed me to get into school or you know do whatever and I'm like having a really hard time celebrating myself and being like congratulations like well done you did a really good job um and that was all you it all combines into this like scary mess of comparing yourself to others not thinking you're good enough so sort of like switching yourself up to to be as someone who you think you perceive as good enough, even though that person you're looking up to probably doesn't think they're good enough either. Talking about like people pleasing and all of that today just kind of ties in with the topics I've been talking about recently because I've been talking also a lot about body image and like not being happy with the way I look. Internal, it's purely mental, you know. Um, when I'm in a good place mentally, I really try and emphasize to myself how amazing my body is and um, I appreciate everything about it and I try and focus on the things that I love about my body but when I'm sort of in a bit of a wobbly mental place I do the opposite and I sorry and I look at everything I don't like and I stare at myself in the mirror and I'm pinpointing all the things that I wish I could change and I'm uh, like dictating my lifestyle based on disliking my body, which is just like not the way to be at all. I look the same as I did when my mentality was good and I loved my body. Um, I don't think anything about my body has changed, but just because I'm in like a slightly less good mental space, I am like judging the exact same body in a completely different way. And I am spending a lot of time on the internet. I'm finding myself <sighs> comparing myself to all these people I'm seeing on the internet. Um, I'm spending so much time on TikTok. I'm spending so much time on Instagram. And I am just loading myself up with like people I want to be who I am not. All the people I compare myself to on the internet, all the people that I have like made a list, not an actual list, but in my head, like all the people that I see on the internet and I'm like, oh, there we go. There's another person that has something that I don't have. Um, they all are completely different people. There is not some sort of specific look or vibe that I am trying to chase. It's it's like if I, if I made an actual billboard, not billboard, um, uh, like a cork board. If I got a cork, if I got a cork board and I printed out a picture of every single person that I compare myself to, they would all look completely different. Uh, I don't think I would find many similarities. Maybe that they're mostly all women, but other than that, like I don't think that there's a particular body type I want. I don't think there's a particular, you know, lifestyle I'm looking for. I just think that I am prone to comparing myself to anyone. But anyway, I want to get back into specifically people pleasing and like doing things for other people or to like impress other people and not yourself or doing things to sort of like fit into this mold that you think that you should be in. I don't know, my brain doesn't work today. I guess I'll start with like a personal story of me trying to like be someone else in order to sort of fit some sort of mold or get some sort of validation from outside sources. One big thing that I can think of is social media and particularly my YouTube channel. I don't know if anyone's ever gone through my YouTube videos before. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have not been here from the beginning because I have switched up my 
type of video, let's just say a thousand times over, a thousand times over. I started this YouTube channel doing art YouTube videos. I am a painter sometimes. And so in the beginning of my YouTube journey, I hate that, but whatever. In the beginning of me making YouTube videos, I painted and I filmed my painting process and I didn't even speak in the videos and they were just sort of like, I don't know, like cute, relaxing, like painting videos, whatever. And I was like, oh, I really love doing these. Um, I guess <clears throat> over time, this sort of enjoyment of YouTube started to sort of like fizzle out and I started to become much more aware of like needing subscribers and views and like my videos were not really getting many subscribers or views. They're still not really, but I'm gonna get into that. And so I stopped doing the painting videos kind of. Like it was, a, it was like a gradual change, but I started doing more vlogs, but they were sort of like art student vlogs. And to be honest, I really didn't like doing those. I didn't like filming myself outside. I didn't really feel like I was saying anything interesting. I didn't really feel like I was showing anyone anything very interesting. I just didn't like love it, but I did it for ages because after being on YouTube for a while, I obviously was watching a lot more YouTube and I was obviously watching a lot of other people's content and I was seeing that people were not making videos about painting. Like I was like people who make YouTube videos about painting, like don't really become that successful. I now know that that's not true. There are a bunch of really cool people that I watch now, but my whole thing was that I, my goal, my goal shifted basically. My goal shifted. Originally I was happy making videos that I enjoyed making and I was really having fun with that. Then after a while my goal shifted and it became how many subscribers can I get? Like, what is everyone else doing that I can do too? And so then I started doing the vlogs and I actually really didn't like making the vlogs. I found them strenuous <laughs> and um, boring and I didn't like editing them and I just didn't really care about them, but I did them for so long because that seemed to be what everyone else was doing. And then after a while, I sort of stopped making art content at all and I didn't even really film myself at art school or like going to pick up art supplies. I just sort of became, I sort of just started to mimic things that I had seen online, like spend the day with me or get ready with me or anything like that. Get dressed with me, go thrifting with me. And I started just making those types of videos because that's mostly what I saw online. And I kind of felt that YouTube for me became less and less fun the further and further I like delved into this sort of comparison cycle um, of trying to be like everyone else that I saw on the internet. And YouTube really didn't become, you, you, YouTube started to become really unfun for me and it became like a task. And considering the low amount of subscribers and views I was getting, it seemed quite ridiculous that I was doing something I didn't like and it like wasn't even benefiting me at all. Um, but I kept doing it because I was like, you know, I had hope that my new goal, which was like to get loads of subscribers would work. And it didn't really. Um, and I also became super miserable. I just really didn't want to make YouTube videos anymore. The joy had just completely like gone from them. And I was mostly just focused on the amount of views I got and like considering they were not that high. I just, I just became so down on myself about the whole thing. And I kind of just wanted to like give up on YouTube altogether. Um, my idea was not to revert back to what I was originally doing, which I actually enjoyed. My idea was just to stop altogether. Um, but anyway, I did this, I did this for a while. I kept shifting my content area, what do you call that? Like my, uh, my niche. I enjoyed making art videos because I enjoyed making art and I enjoyed making art videos because it was like an extra part of my art practice. Um, but then when I started to compare myself to other YouTube content creators and I saw what they were making, then I ended up making content I really didn't like. 
and it didn't change anything in my YouTube career at all anyway. I would say even with this podcast, which I actually love, um, I've found something that I really, really enjoy doing. I love just sitting here and chatting with you guys. It's like one of my favorite things to do. It's like one of my favorite outlets ever. But I will say that even on my podcast, sometimes I'll just search up like popular topics to talk about on a podcast and just like do my best to talk about those on an episode. And I will say that whenever I don't feel like I've made a genuine episode about something I really am interested in, they never do well. <laughs> and again, I'm still in the mentality that like things do well if they get views and likes and like outside validation from like outside sources, which isn't true, but like I'm obviously still in that mindset. But I will say that when I am making content that does not feel genuine to me, uh, when I'm talking about something that like really just doesn't hit home with me and I'm just sort of saying it because I saw another YouTuber doing it and they got like a million views, uh, I first of all don't enjoy making those episodes because I'm like what the fuck am I talking about and I'm just like scrambling for ideas like as I'm filming but yeah I, I also just don't, like don't care about them you know the last few episodes I've made have really been some have really been topics that like are close to me and I just feel like I've enjoyed the whole process of making those making those making those way more than like when I try and fake it and I try and touch on a topic that like really has nothing to do with me but I just saw that it was like a popular YouTube topic that like maybe if I made a video on that I would get views like all my shit all my goals have just shifted on this app on this social media platform um so I will say that YouTube is one of those big things where I have sort of dedicate, dedicated, I've sort of dictated like what I'm making and like what I'm spending my spare time doing basically because I'm a student, like I do YouTube in my spare time um, and I have now seen myself spend my spare time doing stuff that like I don't even want to do and no one even wants to watch but for some reason I've got it into my head that this is the stuff that I should be making. Um, if I want to fit into the YouTuber's mold and I want to be like everyone else on the internet, which I don't even know why I'd want to be like everyone else on the internet. Also, that doesn't even make any sense because everyone on the internet is very, very different. Um, but I will say that one big part of my life that I feel has been dictated by people pleasing is my YouTube content, which is like a really big deal to me. Um, and I can tell that I am like unhappy making certain things and it's always when it's forced. It's always when I've done my research, seen popular topics on YouTube and been like, okay, well maybe if I make a podcast episode on this topic, like people will watch it and then like I'll get subscribers and I'll be famous. It just never works. It never works. And it like my channel suffers and I kind of suffer. I just fucking am so miserable doing it. And I just feel like I've just completely wasted my time and wasted your time because I'm like usually talking about things. If I'm talking about something that doesn't affect me, if I'm talking about something that doesn't hit close to home or I don't have like personal experience in, like I am literally giving you nothing. I'm just giving you information that like I've gone online, which you could just search up for yourself. Um, me telling you these things is no more helpful. I'm sure there's like millions of YouTube videos about that topic that you can see where people actually have personal experience on the matter. Like it, it, it benefits absolutely no one by me like forcing YouTube videos, you know? <laughs> um, so I would say like YouTube is one of those things that has really been changed over through my like issue with people pleasing. And I will say not only did making those videos feel like unnecessary and like unbeneficial to anyone, but they also kind of made me feel a bit like icky, you know, like, like sort of like selling myself out a little bit. Like I would see, you know, some YouTube some YouTubers are very like personal and I, I think I am personal. I think I talk about my, a lot of personal stuff on my podcast, which I'm absolutely happy with because I am an open book. But I think when it comes to like showing people my personal life and stuff like that, I don't love that. And I did a lot of that in the beginning because 
oh, I saw that other people were doing it. Um, and I don't know, I just felt like kind of icky. Like even when I was like in the kitchen filming myself making tea, <laughs> I was like, ooh, I don't really love this, you know, but I did it anyway, just because I thought that that is what everyone else wanted. Um, and they didn't really anyway, but I would say that the feeling of like unfulfillment from making those videos and like sort of just feeling super icky about myself, just being like, Rita, why are you making this? Like, it's not making you happy. Um, and yeah, it just, <clears throat> I just spent so much time trying to make these like super unnatural videos of myself. Um, and I just, it just wasn't me, just wasn't who I was, just wasn't how I wanted to be on YouTube. And I would say that even the podcast was definitely a product of me wanting to be like some other people I see on the internet. However, I started making my YouTube podcast and I became absolutely obsessed with it. I loved that I could just sit here and talk. Um, I found it very therapeutic. I am an open book. I will talk about literally anything in my life, um, especially if I think it'll be helpful to like other people listening. I know that over time where I've like been dealing with some dark shit or just feeling really like weird inside my brain. I know that I have had moments where I will go on social media, I will see someone who's talking about the same problems I feel like I'm having and it'll make me feel elated. Like I will feel this, it's like this sense of relief that feels like physical, you know, like a physical weight has like been lifted. And I really wanted to be that. Um, and so far, I still feel like I want to do that. Um, this podcast feels very fulfilling to me. Um, even though we don't get that many views at the moment, um, I know that I really love doing this because even though the views are down, the views are kind of low and I only kind of contact a couple people on YouTube, um, having those having that like small amount of people watching and like having someone even comment saying like thank you so much for posting this like it really helped me like I know that I love doing this podcast because that's enough for me I feel happy and satisfied 100% when I get that um so yeah I don't know like this podcast was definitely a product of me kind of like wanting to like be like other people but it kind of worked out because I guess a podcast is very I mean, a podcast could be about anything, I think. So the idea of the podcast kind of came from like outside influences, but I mostly, unless I'm like being crazy and trying to just like fit the mold, I mostly talk about things that I like really feel quite passionate about. So I don't know why, but as human beings, I think that we are kind of obsessed and heavily crave validation. I can also just say that as a human being, I find it extremely difficult to accept compliments. Um, I went heavy on this last week, but it's interesting that I spend a lot of time craving and trying to find outside validation when like all the outside validation is gonna be doing is like at best, it's gonna like be giving me compliments, you know? Like outside validation at its core is like other people coming up to you and saying like, I love your skirt or I love your YouTube video or I love your whatever. Um, it's like getting subscribers, it's getting all of that. Like as a human being, like I find it oh, so difficult to accept comments like that. Any compliment I get, I sort of brush it off or I try to figure out a way to like excuse it. Um, so it's kind of interesting. It's like, what am I really reaching for? You know, like, what am I really reaching for? Even when people want to be my friend, I question it. I'm like, why does this person want to be my friend? Are the parents like paying them to be my friend or something? Or my parents paying them? Like, I, it's not like an easy thing to take in for me. Um, and I actually kind of feel very uncomfortable with compliments as it is. So 
I don't really know like what the actual goal is to like fit in. I don't quite get it. Um, it's a confusing one for sure. It's definitely confusing. Like if I like play the tape forward into like what happens when I fit the mold and I do everything society tells me to do, like what what's the end goal there? Like what happens? Not sure. Not sure. Haven't really thought about that, you know, but don't, I don't really think all the way through sometimes. I think it's very easy to turn accomplishments into like a numbers game as well, where instead of understanding that you like achieved something or you were successful at something, uh, it's not, we like lose sight of what success really means and it just kind of becomes like how many people attended my show or how many people watched my YouTube video or how many likes do I have or how many friends do I have um and instead of like appreciating how genuine and rare your like small close circle of friends is you're sort of saying like, oh, I don't have that many friends and like that becomes the focus, not the fact that you ha are so lucky and you found like really genuine, lovely friends who, which most people don't find. Um, and instead of being like, wow, I'm so lucky that I have these friends that listen and care and like will be at my doorstep every time I need something. Um, like instead of saying how lucky you are with those things, you're saying like, well, some people have like 30 friends and I only have like four. So what does that mean? Like I said with the YouTube, like getting really genuine, lovely comments about how like sometimes people listen to me and it like makes them feel good. Like that is something to be grateful for. And I am, but of course my sort of like people pleasing, fitting into the mold mind is like, well, I don't really have that many views and I'm sort of like brushing aside the achievement and success of like even getting one human being to say that you made them feel better. Like that is an insane achievement that like should be like, should be considered as success a hundred percent. And when I'm in a good mental space, I a hundred percent consider that an absolute success when I'm feeling very like crunchy I do not I think of just numbers I just want numbers 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 like it's all a numbers game it just becomes the all all like ideas of success and achievement kind of go out the window and it all becomes just like how many people are paying attention to me basically um which is like really unsatisfying because honestly when you're in that headspace like no amount of numbers is gonna be good enough, honestly. I think the core idea I'm trying to talk about is when we compare ourselves to other people and we spend our lives trying to please other people, we're basically like living for other people and not for ourselves. And as a human being who only probably has one time on this planet, I think that once we get to the end of our lives and we think back on everything we did and said, I think that we're going to be a little bit disappointed if we feel as though we have spent our whole lives living for other people and not ourselves. You have to put yourself first um, because at the end of the day, like, it's what makes you happy that's important, not people around you. Also, like, over time, I have idolised various people and thinking back on the people I idolised back then... Um, and the things that I did to impress them. Like when I was a teenager, I really wanted to impress other people. I really, really wanted to be uh, liked and like in the cool group or whatever. And so I went out a lot. I went to clubs a lot. I hated going to clubs, but I always went because other people were going. And so I didn't want to be left out. I would go, get completely wasted, embarrass myself every single time. Um, you know, I would be mean to people because other people thought it was cool to be mean to people and like I would always leave that scenario feeling like gross and icky um, because I don't love <laughs> bitching about people, um, especially not in the way that teenagers do. Like, okay, yes, of course, like I gossip a bit now. If I hear a story, I'll like talk about it with my friends. But I think like being a teenager is like a different level of kind of a bit nasty, honestly. And I would never like comment on someone's appearance. Like I would never say like, oh, did you see what she was wearing today? Like, I, like no, 
But as a teenager, absolutely, I did that. Absolutely. I would say, oh my God, look how bad that girl's skin is. You know, like so mean and so judgmental and um, so icky and basically doing it just to impress like my immediate friendship circle and not really, it was not really something that I like wished to do for myself. Um, and that kind of like affected me and made me really dislike myself because I was just like, ooh, what am I doing? Like, don't talk about people. And it also got me into a lot of trouble, you know? Like, people would find out what I had said about other people and they would be upset and mad, understandably, and I would get myself into these, like, scenarios which I really didn't see myself being involved in, but I was just so desperate for people to think that I was, like, cool and interesting. So I would just, like, do all of this stuff that I really, really didn't want to do in order for people to accept me and understand me. Um, and yeah, it just ended up making me like unhappy. You know, I can tell you that anything I've ever done, which is dedicated, not, I see, keep saying dedicated, anything that I've ever done, which has been dictated by someone else, like I always feel unhappy about, always. I think even if someone suggests that I buy something and I don't like it, but I just buy it to make them feel better because they suggested it to me. Like, I'll drive home and be like, why the fuck did I buy this? Why do I have this ugly t-shirt in my car? You know, it's like, I think we're so scared also of like offending people, which is like a huge part of it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I have thrown parties in my house with like a lot of people um, purely just because I don't want to look like a fun sponge and I want to be cool and I want people to come to my party but like during the party like I don't want anyone to be there and I want everyone to go home and um, everyone leaves and at the end of the night I'm like left like clearing up all this shit from this party that I didn't even want to throw in the first place but I'm just like and I still do that now like that is not something I did as a teenager and stop like I still do that now I have thrown parties which I don't didn't want to do like recently recently and I'm sober and I have had multiple times <laughs> there have been multiple times where it's been me in my trashed house like cleaning up like vodka bottles and like little drug baggies like from the floor and I'm like why the fuck did I do this? Like at no point of this did I want to do this. Like before, middle and after, like I didn't want to do this. Why, why, why? It's like all to impress and to please people. Like that is the end, that is, that is it. That's literally all I'm doing it for. I thought it was kind of interesting also just to look at like through our lives, who we're influenced by. Um, because I think that kind of gives you an idea of like when we really, really start to like seek outside validation from people. Um, so basically like infancy and Charlie, what? Infancy and early childhood, Charlie childhood. Infancy and early childhood, our main influences are parents and caregivers and like close family members, you know, this is like zero to five years old. Um, six to 12, which is childhood, it's family, teachers and peers. So already at like six to 12, we're already kind of being influenced by like people in our classroom um, and kids are really mean. And I was always so embarrassed as a kid because kids would always make fun of me for like weird various things. And I would really like, take it super personally, you shouldn't, children are mean. Um, and then adolescence from 13 to 18, your main influences are your friends, peer groups, and this is when social media comes into it a lot. It then says like early adulthood, you start to get a little bit more influenced by like romantic partners, mentors, professional relationships, and culture trends. I would say that the influences that I got when I was an adolescent, like 13 to 18, which is friends, peer groups, media, and social trends, I would say that a lot of those things have still stuck with me, even to the age of 26. I am still very influenced by social media and my friends. Um, I would say as a teenager, I was a lot worse, a lot, a lot worse. Like, I really, really put myself out of the way in order to impress other people. 
Um, I'm not saying that I'm anything like I was back then, because back then I can tell you it was bad. I would go out literally every night, even if I was like hungover, even if I was sick, I would go out and drink because I just wanted to be impressive to people and I didn't want to let anyone down. Um, peer pressure was huge in my teens. Peer pressure was massive. Um, I started doing, I tried all the drugs, you know, I felt very pressured to have sex for the first time. Like these are all massive life things that I can probably say with confidence I did purely because like everyone around me was doing them and I didn't all really want to feel like left out. Um, I don't think I would ever do anything like that today. I think that I'm a little bit more sure of myself at 26. I don't think if someone was like, hey, Rita, go get a tattoo with me. Um, I don't think if I didn't want to do that, I would do that. So I would say that there has been a pretty large improvement in my people pleasing, but it's definitely not gone. Um, and I definitely find myself like floating into spaces where I'm like, why am I here? Like, what am I doing? I don't want to be here. This is not me at all. Um, I want to be at home in bed at 9 p.m. Um, yeah. I just think it's interesting where we get our influences from, like, at each stage of our life. And I will say definitely that as an early adult, like, being influenced by romantic partners is quite a big thing. I see all of my friends kind of switching up a bit based on, like, whoever they're going out with. I will say the same about myself, like I do a lot of things that I don't think I would do if it was just me deciding on what to do. Um, but honestly with that, I can say that maybe there's like some benefits in it because I have like learnt, seen and done a lot of things that I ended up really loving and I would never have tried them in the first place. So I will say that sometimes a little bit of people pleasing, like might end up as a good thing it might just like push you to sort of get out of your comfort zone a bit but I would say on the whole like probably not you know probably not um and especially if you have a partner who is like not really on the right path I'm like lucky enough to have one that is like very inspirational and like makes me want to work and like you know be successful but I have definitely had partners in the past that are going down the wrong path 100% and I have just like followed them like a puppy dog down and I've ended up in really bad situations and I don't know how to get myself out of those situations because it wasn't really like me going in there in the first place um but when the consequences arise it's all me you know I'm the only one that can figure it out like the people I followed down that dark path aren't going to be helping me back out, that's for sure, that's for sure. <laughs> to live your life for anyone but yourself is a big no-no, a big no-no. I like, I actually like often think about when I was a child and my teachers would always say like, if we had a, a quiz in school or something, my teachers would always say like, don't, don't try copy the person next to you because you don't know if they're right or not. Um, but of course you would like, if you didn't know the answers, you would like look next to you on the table and you would be like, ooh, what does that person put down? And you would just like copy whatever that person put down. But like, how do you know that that person knows <laughs> what they're talking about? And so many times I would get like zero on my papers because I was like, I was just trusting that they knew what they were doing and they didn't. And then I ended up like getting really bad grades, you know? So I like, think about that often um when I I'm seeing when I'm seeing someone or I'm with someone or I'm seeing someone on the internet and I'm like oh like I don't look or act or seem that way and I really really should I like often try and think like remember when you were a kid and <laughs> your teacher would say not to copy the person next to you because you don't know if they're doing it right like think about that in just like day-to-day -day life honestly it has stopped me a couple times <laughs> from completely just like losing myself and just like following someone else I think that I think that people pleasing a whole a huge part of it is just not having the courage 
to be disliked. And there is actually a book on that, which I am going to get and read and talk about this again, because I think it's going to give me a lot of insight, a lot more than I can give you right now. But it's basically called, I think, The Courage to Be Disliked. Yeah, The Courage to Be Disliked. And I think like the idea of that book is just to say... I'm just reading a little summary. Uh, The book argues that true happiness comes from living authentically and being unafraid of disapproval from others. Based on Alfred Adler's psychological theories, it emphasizes that we can choose our past in life regardless of past experiences or social expectations. Um, This sounds like the exact book I should be reading, so I'm going to order it literally when I log off. But it has like a lot of... These like sort of the key points that it goes through, which is... The past does not define you. Um, Unhappiness is a choice. I don't know if I 100% agree with that. Kind of yes, but kind of also no. Interpersonal relationships shape our lives. Separation of tasks, your tasks and others' tasks. The courage to be disliked. Um, Life is not a competition. Happiness is contribution. Let go of praise and criticism. Rewrite your life narrative and the role of encouragement. Um, Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to read this and then maybe we'll do like an updated episode where I can like impart some wisdom that this book imparted on me (laughs) but I think that it all kind of boils down to literally like the courage to be disliked like I think that if we didn't care about people like not liking us or people thinking that we were different if we didn't care about that at all there would be no reason for us to be trying to follow other people's suits. Like, we would just be 100% living for ourselves. So I think, like, as human beings, a fear to be disliked is imparted on us from a very, very young age. If we if we really didn't care what anyone else thought, then we would not be trying to please anyone else. We would not be trying to please anyone else. Also... I would just like to stress the fact that it is absolutely impossible to please everyone. Absolutely impossible. Let's say you are orange. Um, Some people really, really like orange and some people absolutely despise it. Like, how are you going to be really, really liked by the people who love orange if you decide to turn yourself blue to please the other people? Then the people who like orange aren't going to like you. And the people who like blue might you know it's like it's absolutely impossible to please everyone I think that as we can learn to become free from like the constant need to prove ourselves I think that in turn we will just be happier people and I think that without even knowing it I think we're like following in people's footsteps without really like being 100% conscious of it. As I said before, like in the past and even like in present day, I have done stuff to impress other people and it has made me actually unhappy and has left me with consequences that I don't know how to deal with because I didn't really want to be in this position in the first place. Um, But I just simply did it so someone else could be happy. There's so many types of different people in the world and I can guarantee you that whatever you want to do, whatever your goals are, whatever type of person you are, there's going to be someone else in the world just like you, you know? I think that we cling on to ideas of people and we decide that we really, really want to be like those people um, because we feel out of place, that we feel, you know, left out or whatever. But I can tell you that in the moments where I have been my most genuine, honest self, I have found the best friends ever because I genuinely have connections with them and I don't have to pretend at all around them. I'm just like 100% me. Um, And I can tell you the friends that I make when I'm not 100% me, I find quite hard to keep up with that friendship because I'm kind of like faking it the whole time. Um... But I think if you're faking it the whole time, you're like losing the opportunity to find genuine like-minded people just like you. And I think that to live a happy life, that is so important to be around people that understand you and love you. Um, As someone who like suffers from a lot of mental illness, I have tried to be around friendship groups that aren't really very open about that kind of stuff and kind of bottle all those things up. And so in turn, I do that. And for me, over 
time I've learned that if I can't talk about how I'm feeling, I will absolutely explode and things will go really, really wrong. Um, I think life has a really interesting way of like leading you through and onto a path. And I think that if you're fighting that and you're not na- letting it naturally happen and you're not just like genuinely being yourself, like you're kind of just going to start like avoiding and resisting the paths that like life is trying to like push you down. And I don't think you're going to be as happy. Um, and this is coming from someone who has spent all their lives trying in some way to sort of like make other people like me. Um, I think that the more genuine we can be, the happier we'll be, the easier life will be. Um, trying to be someone else is really fucking hard. It is not easy to wake up in the morning and like put a different face on and try and make yourself interested in things that other people are interested in just because you think it's cool. Like, you know, um, the happiest I've ever been are the moments where I am just like 100% me and this sounds so corny and cringy but I can tell you it's so true and in a world where there seems to be like so many rules and a lot of influence like constant influence um, it's so important to remind yourself of like who you are and what's like special and unique about yourself because there's something special and unique about literally everyone and I also find that the people who really 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 try and fit in the mold like I don't feel like I learn a lot from them um I think to live a proper life you have to make your own decisions you have to make your own mistakes you have to learn from your experiences and I think if you're trying to like follow someone else's life then you're not really going to grow properly as a person because you're not going to have those like very personal experiences you're going to kind of have like experiences that don't really align with you as a person and like you are you and you're awesome and if you want to grow like you've got to just like be yourself and like see where life takes you because I swear there is a place for absolutely everyone And as you grow up older and older, like, if you're a teenager watching this, I know how fucking hard it is to try and, like, be yourself. It's terrifying. It's scary. People judge you. People who are younger are just meaner. Um, And I can say, like, even though I spend a lot of time people-pleasing still, I can say that I am the most sure of myself I've ever been. And if someone tells me to do something and I don't want to do it or someone asks me to go somewhere and I don't want to go, like I feel very comfortable in saying no a lot of the time. Sometimes my people pleasing personality pops up and, you know, whatever. But considering how I used to be as a teen, I definitely trust myself a lot more and I am definitely a lot more like comfortable. And also just to say like, Being yourself and being comfortable, again, like you'll learn and meet people who are just like you. And if you're resisting that and if you're trying to be like someone else, you're not going to be able to meet the people who are just like you. And like meeting people who are just like you, who feel the same way as you, like your paths will like align with each other. Like you'll both not want to go to the club, you know, Uh, you'll both not want to do this thing. You'll both want to do this thing. You'll both want to talk about this thing. And like life just becomes like easier and like you know, um, so yeah, I don't know, I just wanted to talk about that, um, but I know how hard it is, but honestly, like, in the moments where I've just been like, fuck this, and I just do everything I want to do, I have been the happiest, I have learnt the most, I have met the best people, um, and in the moments where I'm super controlling and I'm trying to control every aspect of my life and I'm trying to follow someone else's path, like, I meet the wrong people, I don't enjoy where I am, I feel scared and anxious all the time because I don't think I'm going to be able to, like, keep it up, it's just not as fun, it's not as you know, great, uh, the world is, like, full of every, every type of person, you will meet your people, you will meet your tribe, and when you do, you will figure out that you do not have to do anything that you don't want to do, and the people around you, if they're the right people, will love you no matter what, and they will not judge you for not going out, they will not judge you for not kissing a boy, they will not judge you for anything, um, 
the people around you should make you feel safe and you shouldn't feel like you have to prove yourself to them or you have to do things that make you uncomfortable in order to make them happy. Like, it takes time and I have had multiple friendship groups where I um, just was totally with the wrong people. That's an experience that I needed, okay? That's an experience that I needed and if this is happening to you, like, I get it. But again, yes, that is also an experience that we need to go through and understand. Um, but when you meet those people who are so genuine and just like love you for you, life becomes so much easier, it just becomes so much smoother. Um, you don't have to remember a lot of stuff. I feel like when you're pretending to be someone else, there's so much to remember and you've got to like keep your story straight and your facts in line. And when you're just like genuinely just living as yourself through the day, you don't have to do any of that. Like you don't have to put any work in because you're just being yourself. Um, and it's like a totally freeing experience. Again, like I'm not 100% there yet. I still absolutely do things that don't really align with what I want to do and don't totally make me happy. And I think that's probably going to be something that I'll slip into every now and again. Um, but at the end of the day, like as long as I'm aware of it and you know, when I was younger, I was not aware of it, really. I understood that I was, like, doing stuff that I didn't want to do, but I was, like, totally unaware that I could just say no <laughs> to things that I didn't want to do, and the right people would accept that, and the wrong people wouldn't, and, like, whatever, and I just did not have the courage to think that way. I didn't even want to find out if people weren't going to like me. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted just everyone to like me. But anyway, I love you guys. Um, don't let the bosses get you down. <laughs> you are genuine and awesome. And there's 101 things about you that just make you awesome. So just remember that if you can. Um, but I love you guys. I will see you next time. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do. It's super, super helpful to me and you can see every time I post anything. So anyway, I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Okay, love you, bye.